welcome to another session in decisions training in today's session we will look into how to install decisions today we will be installing decisions v8 version so before we go ahead and install version 8 into our system let's go ahead and see what are the prerequisites that are required for installations before that i would also like to give a quick intro on different types of servers what type of hardware do we require for installation as well as the software requirements and others so as we speak there are three different types of servers one is production server non production server as well as repository server when we speak about production server it is a live environment where created processes are leveraged by end users non production server is non customer facing environment used for testing and development to access production readiness repository server is also a non customer facing environment used to help and maintain version controlling and migrating projects between servers so depending upon the type of the usability we can select the version or we can also select the server we would like to install now moving on to the next the browser compatibility so chrome and microsoft edge are recommended for building in the studio so when we are trying to build any projects or maintain those projects we have to navigate ourselves into the studio so when we are navigating into the studio it is always recommended to use chrome as well or else the edge the firefox as well as safari gives us the ability to only get into the portal so this is about the browser compatibility now let's move into hardware specifications so hardware specifications are something related to our system so it includes uh, based upon the server type that we are installing we would like to have the required specification for that particular type so for example the production uh, server which is a base requires uh, 3 gigahertz uh, core 4 crore cpu while it needs 16 gb ram while the advanced requires 8 core um, and the ram or the memory that is required is 32 gb so similarly the non production server has its own uh, hardware specification that needs to be required in the system and the repository needs its own hardware specification as you see the repository requires only 4 core uh, cpu for processing as well as it needs 8 gb ram and a storage of 100 gb is required so now let's move into the next the prerequisites so the prerequisites that are required while installing decisions is dotnet 6 which is runtime and it is 64 bits so we can go ahead and download and install this so for ease of demonstration i have already installed dotnet 6 runtime we can also install the bundle this is also a prerequisite dotnet 6 hosting bundle and the desired version of decisions so currently we are referring to v8 so we would be installing v8 so in the previous versions you might have already installed v7 or v6 depending upon the version release and the requirements that you had so the current version is v8 so we will be installing v8 in addition to the dotnet we also need to install a database so for ease of demonstration i'll be connecting with the sql server management studio so i have already installed the sql server but we can also connect decisions version 8 with any other databases such as aws azure as well as postgres so depending upon your database availability you can connect with those existing databases so in today's session we will be connecting with the sql server management studio and this as well i have already installed for us today and the next important thing or the key differentiator on version 8 is it is self hosted so previously on version 7 version 6 we used to host it on ias but now there is no requirement to download or host it on ias 
we can actually self host this. So the operating system is a Windows Server. Um, it can be a 64 bit. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, make sure that we have a .NET 6 runtime as well as .NET 6 hosting bundle already installed. So now let's move on to the next one. So how do we download and select the installation type and database setup in decisions or while installing decisions? So we let's go ahead and download the decisions installer from decisions web page. So I'll be navigating back into the web browser. So let me just stop sharing and go ahead and um, share my screen. So I'll be taking you through the SQL management server first. So as you see, I have already installed the SQL server management studio. So when I try to get into the SQL server management studio, it asks me the database engine as well as the server name that I would like to connect. So I already have a decisions developer um, SQL server connected. So in your case, if you are connecting with any other uh, existing database, you would have those as well. So let's go ahead and connect. And once the connection is there, we would be navigated into the SQL uh, server. So we have all the databases, security and other information as well. So now let's move ahead and go into our installation process further. So for this, I'll be navigating back into decisions website. So let me just take you to the decisions website. We are currently on decisions website and here we would be able to find resources. So under resources, we have installation. So as soon as we click on installation, this would navigate us to a different page where we have all the releases and this gives us the ability to download. So we have uh, also given the option to download version seven. So we have covered this in our previous session. So let's go ahead and download the new version, which is version eight, and it is a current version. So let's go ahead and click on download. And as soon as we click on download, we would now be able to look into the release notes or browser specific file, or we can also look into the installation guide. So for installing V8, we have two options. We can install, uh, click on download installer or we can click on download offline installer. So let's go ahead and click on download offline installer. So as soon as we click on this, the download would be initiated. So I'll just uh, keep this running or I have already downloaded this for us. So I'll be just navigating you uh, to that page as I switch between the slides. In case if we have any further queries, we can always refer to documentation.decisions.com, which gives us a complete information on the download as well as other information related to any queries that we have. So let me just switch back into the installation guide or the place where I have already downloaded and installed our version 8. So once the download gets complete, this is how you would be able to see your installer. So as soon as we click on this and run it as administrator, the installation process would begin. So let me just um, click on this and go ahead and complete the process. So I'll just run this as administrator and click on yes. And this asks for a confirmation. I'll just click on yes. And once this is done, it would actually ask us to click on install and agree on the terms and conditions. So once we move into this, now we would be able to select the type of installation as discussed earlier, depending upon your use case, you can actually select whether it is a standard or designer or whether it is a multi-tenancy server control. So for now, we will install this as a multi-tenancy server control and now click on next. So we can also click on show advanced settings and see other fee functionalities as well, but this is not required. So let's click on next. And once this is done, we would be able to uh, select the type of installations. So you can keep this as unchecked. 
So let's go ahead and click on next. And now it asks the database type of connection that we need to establish. Since we have an MS uh, SQL server, we'll be connecting with this particular database. In case if you have an Azure or a PostgreSQL, you can actually select those particular and connect with this particular database. So after that, now we can establish the connection type, enter the server name, as well as the database that we are connected to and enter the password over here. So right now I have entered my standard password, which is equivalent for this SQL uh, server. So I can click on test. And as you see, the testing uh, or the database connection is successful. So you can set your own passwords for your servers and use those IDs over here. So let's click on next. And here, this is the most important. So since we are uh, hosting this in our local, that is our local machine, this asks for a port. So this is an 83 port. You can change it like uh, to 85, 86 based upon your requirements. Um, so let's go ahead and click on next. And this is a primary instance. The control server setup type is on the emails. It is SMTP direct server. Let's go ahead and click on next. And this is not required. Encryption keys, we don't need to enter any of these. Let's go ahead. And the file storage path is where exactly this all the installation files are stored. It is under program files, decisions, and file storage. We can also change the location path, but I would like to keep it as is. Let's go ahead and click on next. And once this is done, it also shows us all the system requirements and all of them are satisfied. As you see, there is a .NET Core version, there is Windows administration, SQL Server is also there and the port is also available. So let's click on next and then it reviews all the installing options. And as soon as I click on next, the installation process would begin. So as you see, the process has just begun. Downloading files is going on. So if we click on show details, we would be able to see what all processes are running in the background. So the installation process takes a little much of time. So it would take around 10 to 15 minutes to install the entire um, server information. So once the installation is done, this would move to the done path and we would be able to log in into our instance. So let's just wait for a few minutes and um, come back once the installation is complete. While the installation gets successfully installed, I'm back with my slides and I would like to cover a last few topics. So as you see, we have installed our decisions eight. We went to the page and we downloaded our installer and then we clicked on into our uh, installer and clicked it as run as administrator. We selected the type and we completed the other functionalities and we selected the port. So based upon the availability, you can select the port that you want to connect. So we have established a port connection of 85 and once the installation is complete. As mentioned earlier, we would be able to log in into our account. So whenever you get into the login page, log in using as admin at the rate decisions.com and the password would be admin. So this is about the installation uh, process and how V8 can be installed. So let's wait for a couple of more minutes and see how the installation process go through and navigate back into the studio or portal once the installation is complete. We are back with our installer. So as you see, the installation process is still going on and we can see all the files that are getting installed over here. So we can uh, look into each one of this and if there is any issue or if the installation gets stalled at any point of time, we would also be able to see what the issue is and what the exception was. So the installation process is successfully going on. So it would take a couple of more minutes to uh, get the instance completely um, initiated.
So as you see, the application has been successfully installed and we can see all the drivers or the files that got installed over here. This looks great. And once we click on finish, we would be able to successfully complete our installation. So I'm just clicking on finish over here. As soon as we clicked on the finish, this navigated us back to the decisions login portal. So as we have connected this with localhost 85, the port is available right over here. So depending upon the port information that you have finished at the time of installation, you would be able to see that particular host details on the web URL page. So let's go ahead and add the details, um, the login or the username, which is admin at the rate decisions.com. And I will also be furnishing the password over here that is admin and click on login. So as soon as we click on login, this would take us right into the studio. So remember we are in version eight. Version eight is actually different to any other versions. So as you see, now we have the folder tree right over here and the positioning is also slightly different to that of V7 or V6 versions. So the systems is placed right on the left hand section. So you can navigate into the systems by clicking on the icon right over here at the bottom. And we can navigate into administration or the system tools or any other uh, details that we are looking for under the system catalog. In case if we are trying to click or create any folders or manage any of the projects, we can click on right over here and create our own designer projects or may it be a simple project. As we have connected to the decisions local database, all the existing database information or the projects that are currently available on the database are directly available right over here. So in your case, if the database is new and you don't have any projects, you would see these projects as MP. This is all about how we install version 8. In case if we have any further queries, we can always refer to documentation.decisions.com, which gives a complete step-by-step -step indication on how to install uh, different versions and what are the requirements, as well as any other queries that we have, not only related to installation, but any other queries. Thank you so much for attending today's session. Have a great day.